friends. So I've been putting off doing a video like this for literal years at this point, mostly because attacking and tearing down other people within a space is not a good look. And most of the time, the people that are doing it have an ulterior motive of either being inflammatory for views or promoting themselves as an alternative. And I wasn't really interested in that. So I will not be attacking Dave Ramsey today in this video. I will also not be defending him. I'll be bringing up legitimate facts and circumstances that need to be addressed and that I hope will be addressed within the Ramsey Solutions business model and institution. I know I have a lot of fans from that space, or some of you may have even found me through my debt-free scream on his channel. And regardless of whether you are for, against, or somewhere in the middle on Dave Ramsey, I hope that you will listen to the following concerns because they are not mine alone. And you'll think critically about them because critical thinking is the only way that we grow and can make smart decisions. And in the money community, I think it's really important to make smart and well-considered decisions. Cue the debt-free scream. <laughs> Two, one. I'm not in charge of basically anything, but I think it's time for Dave Ramsey to retire. Here's why. Dave Ramsey was one of the original personal finance gurus and is uncontested as a leader in this space. He has been giving his financial advice based around the seven baby steps for over 30 years now and has built an empire that is absolutely massive. He's worth an estimated $200 million, but he's been making headlines recently for worse and worse reasons. Allegedly, he creates a toxic and sexist workplace, according to the sources that I will have linked below. And more and more ex-Dave employees are coming forward talking about how it's not the best place to work in Nashville. Dave is an anti-masker and held a huge Christmas party event where catering staff were asked to not wear masks. He refused to shut down during COVID orders. And most recently, he was on national television saying that the stimulus shouldn't have happened, for whom $600 or $1,200 was life-changing, had bigger financial problems, hit a lot of people not the best way. If $600 or $1,400 changes your life, you were pretty much screwed already. Dave's infamous style of tough love money advice is often considered shaming now. He calls people who call in stupid. Obviously you're an idiot. And if anyone dares mention that they're deviating from the Dave Ramsey plan, his cult-like followers will absolutely attack you. I used to be a Dave Ramsey follower, and until very recently, I gave a lot of credit for me being able to pay off my student loan debt to his plan, but I no longer think that his brand of financial advice or his brand as a person is helpful in the personal finance space anymore. I think there's a chance that if he were to retire and maybe pass things over to his daughter, Rachel Cruz, and if she were allowed to amend some of the plan or update it, it could continue to be a great repository of information and encouragement for people trying to pay off their debt and learn more about money. But with him at the helm, more and more people are turning away from not just his financial advice, but from personal finance in general. And I hate seeing these people out in the wilds of YouTube and the internet who have just been chastised and shamed and hurt by his advice his plan and the people who follow him. So let's go over quickly his seven baby steps plan and some of the criticisms that I and other people as a whole have against it. These are legitimate criticisms that people who have either done his plan in the past and have since moved on or other personal finance experts had against him. He's been preaching the same advice for over 30 years and has not updated it at all. Whereas the world has changed. Let's take baby step number one, for example. Dave preaches that you should save $1,000 as a baby emergency fund and then spend every single extra cent that you have 
to debt until you're debt free. A lot of people say that $1,000 isn't worth as much as it was anymore. And I fact check that. Since his plan hasn't been updated in 30 years, inflation alone would put that original $1,000 emergency fund to $2,000 now. So the buying power of that $1,000 back in the 80s when he started, it's worth half of what it was. And in 2020, especially as so many people found themselves suddenly out of work, that $1,000 cushion against the world wasn't enough. And a lot of people swear they will never have just that again because it's not enough to live off of for any genuine amount of time, much less during something like a pandemic. When I was getting out of debt, I kept a $2,000 emergency fund and some sinking funds because I was a single female, <laughs> completely financially on my own, and I was terrified of something happening that would then put me way deeper into debt. Personally, I think a month's worth of expenses should be the bare minimum that you should try to keep. And while that might be intimidating for a brand new budgeter to try to save up, it's also a lot more sustainable as they continue that money journey. Dave's baby step two is to pay off all of your debts in order from smallest to largest, regardless of interest using the snowball method. Now, a lot of people have a math problem with this, and I never really did, but over a long debt journey, differences in debt interest rates could cost you thousands of dollars should you do things one way or another. When I was paying off my debt, I did pay off a smaller, lower interest student loan before I paid off my larger, larger interest one first. And it was nice to be able to pay off that smaller one first, but a lot of people think that you should do the debt avalanche instead and prioritize debt by interest rate. In this step, Dave also says to stop any employer match for retirement so that you can throw more money at debt. And I know a lot of people who really regret doing that during their payoff journey. Most people these days will say that your employer match is part of your salary and that you should do everything that you can to keep it. It is investing while you're still in debt, but it can make a huge difference over your life to have that retirement money growing during those years that you're paying off debt. And I have to agree with those naysayers. Personally, I always advise people to get their retirement match and side hustle or find another way to make up the extra money that they can be paying towards debt because you can get more money, but you can't get back those years of compounding interest in retirement. And I sincerely wish I had started contributing to retirement earlier. Dave is also vehemently against credit cards and a credit score. Why shouldn't responsible individuals such as myself use credit cards? Because you're not, you're delusional. And advises people to never ever use credit cards and that their score doesn't matter and won't make a difference. Even during situations like purchasing a home. Now, when I was paying off debt, I, I followed that advice. I didn't use credit cards. My issue getting into debt was student loans, not credit cards to begin with, but I did not have a credit card throughout my debt payoff journey. Fortunately, I ended my debt-free journey with good credit because the only thing on my credit was my student loans, which were being paid down. But almost every other personal finance ex expert agrees that a credit score is actually really important if you're not a millionaire. It can help you get a lower interest rate on things like a car loan if you have to take one out, which some people do, or a mortgage. Dave says manual under underwriting, but when I was in the process of purchasing my home, I was able to learn that manual underwriting just means making up a credit score for you based on the information that they have. Now your credit score is made up of things like your payment history, your amount of credit that you have available versus how much you use, your length of credit, and several other things that if you have a manual underwriting, essentially you get zero for those scores that you don't have and you're going to end up with a much higher interest rate. Credit is important in today's world and it is important to care about it. Now that doesn't mean that you have to use credit cards every single month if you have a history of overspending with them, but not caring about your credit and wanting your credit score to go to zero is not a feasible or smart action for the majority of people. A lot of people start out on the Dave Ramsey plan and then after they get out of debt, being competent with money because paying off your personal debt will do that for you, especially if you're trying to do it in an accelerated time, then move on to other avenues of personal finance like fire and real estate investing. Dave also likes to say that you can't afford a house until you 
put 20% down, which a lot of people just can't do, whereas they're otherwise pretty financially solvent. I purchased a duplex, a multifamily property, and I used an FHA loan to put only 3.5% down. My home now makes me a stream of income that actually covers the mortgage. And a lot of people in the real estate investment space don't actually believe in paying down your home early because there's a money now for investments versus money later comparison that doesn't always equal out to paying off a home in full is better for you financially when it comes down to the numbers. The world has changed in the past 30 years and Dave Ramsey hasn't changed with it at all. I think his path is an option, but that option isn't always gonna be the best for everyone. And yeah, it doesn't have to be. He's one financial guru. Personally, I believe that you should be able to customize your money plan for your life. And if the numbers and the method make sense, you're the only person that's accountable to it. And at the end of the day, Dave Ramsey is not gonna come in and pay your bills or run your life for you. I think there's a place for tough love advice and a lot of people respond well to that and that's great for them. But a lot of people prefer a more non-judgmental personal finance journey. I think you should definitely be careful about who you're taking advice from, whether it's Dave or me or anyone else, and make sure that the numbers and the plan make sense for you. I think a lot of people probably get burnt out on the Dave Ramsey plan or find themselves in trouble because they don't have enough money saved as a beginner emergency fund and things happen. And a lot of people might say, you owe everything to Dave, which no, I don't. I credit Dave's plan with getting me started on my personal finance journey, but that doesn't mean that I'm obligated to follow him forever. No one is. And it doesn't mean that I can't criticize some of the things that he's doing in the media right now. For years, it seemed like he was building a team of people like Rachel Cruz and Chris Hogan and Ken Coleman of people who could take the mantle once he was done. And he's been on the radio preaching the same exact advice for 30 years. Honestly, I'm sure he's sick of it. Or you'd think he'd be sick of it by now and ready to retire. He certainly got the money to do so. I sincerely hope that Ramsey Solutions is able to grow and adapt. I certainly don't wish them any harm, but I also feel really sorry for people who have been wronged or bullied by his advice and his plan and the people who follow him. If this were another market or another subject that he taught on, I don't think he would be able to get away with what he currently does. So those are my criticisms of Dave Ramsey, both the man and his plan and I would love to know what you think. If you think it might be time for him to step down and let somebody else take the mantle and potentially change things up a little bit, or if you think I should be quiet because he's a multimillionaire and I'm not. Dave also recommends people invest solely in mutual funds and he does that. I don't think it's any sort of secret so that he can recommend his endorsed local providers. I actually went to see one when I started investing and he wanted to take 5% of everything that I invested as his fee. Whereas what I ended up doing was investing in index funds, which are passively managed groups of funds that do essentially the same thing as mutual funds do, but I get charged 0.04% for the pleasure. I don't have a problem with him as a businessman or recommending products and services that make him money. That makes sense. But beyond the debt payoff parts of his plan and the three to six month emergency fund, there are a lot more options than he generally presents. I'd love to know, what do you think of Dave Ramsey these days and historically in the comments below? Do you agree with all facets of his plan or do you think that personal finance is personal? If you type below that I should just shut up because I'm not worth as much as him, that's fine, you don't have to listen to me. Try to remember at the end of the day, we're all responsible for our own finances solely. And Dave Ramsey isn't gonna come pay your bills if you follow his plan and things don't work out. Same as if you follow what I talk about, I'm not gonna come pay your bills. You're responsible for your own financial life and destiny. So your plan better work for you. I don't think there's one size fit all plan that will work for absolutely everybody. And anyone that's selling you something that says otherwise is wrong. I highly encourage you to spend the time, do the math, and be willing to adapt as you use your money and as you go through life. Situations change. And I encourage you to subscribe if you'd like to watch more videos about all of your financial options 
and about real life money. I have never pretended to be perfect online or with money. And I admit all the mistakes I make in the hopes that you won't make the same ones. Who's your money guru? Tell me below. And if you've customized a plan to fit your life, tell me about that as well. I want to cheer for you, root you on. That's what this channel is about. And I hope you have a good day. Bye.